Hello guys, my name is Prince and this is my center. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Post your comments and questions on my social media handles and I'll respond to it. The topic we are going to learn today is the real number system. What are the objectives that we look forward to achieving at the end of this topic? At the end of this topic, you should be able to identify rational and irrational numbers. You should be able to know the properties of operations on real numbers. And you should be able to solve questions on binary operations. We are going to use calculators a lot in this topic. And this is the type of calculator I will be using. So I entreat you to have a calculator with you. Okay, let's continue and begin by learning what real numbers are. The set of real numbers is given by the set of rational and irrational numbers put together. So, if you want the set of real numbers, you need to find what the set of rational numbers are and what the set of irrational numbers are. When you put them together, you have real numbers. So, what are rational numbers? Rational numbers are numbers which can be written as a common fraction or vulgar. That is an integer divided by another. It can be expressed in the form a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero. The set of rational numbers include natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, fractions, terminating and recurring decimals. So if you want the set of rational, num rational numbers, you need to find what natural numbers are, what whole numbers are, integers, fraction, terminating and recurring decimals. So let's begin. Natural numbers. Natural numbers begins from 1, 2, 3, 4 and it continues up to infinity. The set of whole numbers begins with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it continues up to infinity. So you can see from here that the only difference between the set of natural numbers and the set of whole numbers is that the set of whole numbers begins with 0 while the set of natural numbers begins with 1. Real, rational numbers also include the set of integers. What are integers? Integers are negative and positive whole numbers. So we begin from negative infinity to positive infinity. So uh, examples here are negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to infinity. They are all rational numbers. Rational numbers also include terminating decimals. The decimals here are terminating because they end at a point. For example, 1.25, 2.45, 3.725, 3.725 the decimals end at a point it also include recurring decimals decimals that do not end decimals that are infinite they continue on up to infinity so examples are 2 1.222 so you can see from here that the 2 will continue on up to infinity another example is 0 0.123 123 123 so you can see from here that 1, 2, 3 keeps on occurring. That is why it's called recurring decimals. So it gives you an indication that even though it continues up to infinity, the next one that will, is going to continue will be 1, 2, 3. So the 1, 2, 3 keeps on, keeps on recurring to infinity. Another example is 0 0.070707. So this is also an, another example of a recurring decimal. We have 3.443. 443, 443. So if you are being told to continue, all you need to do is to add another 443, even though it will continue up to infinity. Another example of rational numbers are fractions. So fraction examples are being given here. 1 over 2, 3 over 2, 8 over 9, 3 over 7. They are all examples of rational numbers. So we've seen what rational numbers are. Let's look at what irrational numbers are. Irrational numbers, an irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a common fraction. 
So it is the exact opposite of rational numbers. We learned that rational numbers are numbers that can be written as common fractions. So irrational numbers, on, on the other hand, are numbers which cannot be written as common fractions. Let's learn more about them. When an irrational number is when an irrational number is written as a decimal, the decimal is infinite and the numbers has no repeating pattern. So let's look at this. When you look at the numbers that are rational, it contains terminating decimals. So you see that here the decimals are finite. They end at a point. When they are infinite, that is re recurring decimals, there is a common pattern so that you can continue the decimals. But for irrational numbers, when they are written as decimals, the decimal is infinite and the numbers will have no repeating pattern. So unlike here where we have a repeating pattern 1, 2, 3 or here where you have a repeating pattern 0, 7, for irrational numbers, there will be no repeating pattern. We are going to take an example to explain that. Examples of irrational numbers are square root of prime numbers, product of two irrational numbers and a rational multiple of an irrational number. Let's take the examples to explain this. So we said that examples of irrational numbers are square root of prime numbers. We know what prime numbers are. Numbers with just two factors, one and the number itself. So when you take the square root of a prime number, you are going to get an irrational number. So let's look at what that means. Let's take square root of 2 on the calculator and see. So you are going to take square root of 2. Now you see that when you take square root of 2, the decimals are, the whole number part is 1. That is not what we want to look at. We want to look at the decimals. The decimals are 4, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, 2. Now this is not the end. The calculator is designed to give up to just this number of decimal places. This continues up to infinity. Now you can see from here that there is no clear pattern in the decimals. You can't continue. There is no clear order. Unlike the one where we had 1, 2, 3 and 0, 7 occurring, here the decimal part is 4, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, 2. You, can't, you cannot continue from here. So this is an example of an irrational number. Let's take another one, the square root of 3. Let's take square root of 3 and see. So square root of 3 is going to give us one point. What we are interested in is the decimal place. 7, 3, 2, 0, 5, 0, 8, 0, 8. So you can see from here that there is no clear order. The decimal places do not end here. The calculator can only give these, this number of decimal places. That is why we have it here. So there is no clear order in it and the decimal places also continues to infinity. Let's look at another one, the square root of 5. Now, square root of 5 will give us 2.236067. Nine seven seven. There is no clear order here, and the decimals also continue to infinity. So you can take square root of all the prime numbers, and you see that you are going to get decimal places where none of the decimals are recurring, and they continue to infinity. These are all examples of irrational numbers. Another example of irrational numbers is the product of two irrational numbers. That is, multiplying two irrational numbers. We have already seen that examples of irrational numbers are square root of prime numbers. So if you multiply two irrational numbers, that is, you multiply the square root of two, you multiply the square root of two by the square root of three, you are going to get another irrational number. So let's let's look at that. On the calculator, this time you are going to multiply square root of two by square root of three. And when we do that, we are going to get 2.4494897432. So you can see the decimals that we are getting here will continue up to infinity and there is no clear order in it. Let's take another example. We have square root of 5, which is 
you know that 5 is a prime number multiply by the square root of 11 we also know 11 is a prime number that is going to give us 7.4161984867 now you can see from here that there is no clear pattern in the decimals that is very important because that gives us an indication that we are dealing with an irrational number when we take the square root of 7 and we multiply that by the square root of 3 sorry so square root of 7 7 times square root of 3 so you are going to get 4.582575695 the decimals continue up to infinity and there is no clear order in it Another example of irrational numbers are rational multiple of an irrational number. What that means is that multiplying a rational number by an irrational number. So from here we can see that we have 2 root 3. What this means is 2 times square root of 3. We know that 2 is a rational number. Square root of 3 is an irrational number. When you multiply a rational number by an irrational number, as we have here, you are going to get an irrational number. So let's look at that on the calculator. Let's look at 2 root 3. So 2, sorry, 2 root 3 will give us 2 root 3. And that will give us 3.46410161515 So you see, we have decimals and the decimals will continue up to infinity and there is no clear pattern there. It will be the same for the others. So when you come here, we have square root of 4, negative 4 root 7. Negative 4 is a rational number. Square root of 7 is an irrational number. When you multiply negative 4 by square root of 7, you are going to get another irrational number. It's the same with 2 root 2. So we have seen examples of rational numbers and we have seen examples of irrational numbers. Let's continue to the next thing we want to con consider in this topic. Properties of operations on rational numbers. There are four basic operations in mathematics and they are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division we are going to look at the properties of these operations these operations are called binary operations because they can combine two numbers to give us an answer or to give us a, a result so for example if you have something like if you have something like 2 then we bring this operation addition and we write 3 we know that what all we need to do is to add 2 to 3 to give us a result so you can see that this operation which is addition has been able to combine two numbers to give us a result so we are going to look at the properties of these operations the properties of these operations and the first property we are going to consider is the commutative property the commutative property now what does the commutative property says the commutative property says that if you have two operations if you have uh, two numbers here for in this case we are going to use the variables a and b and we are going to call this operation here star what that what it means that what the commutative property says is that if you have a star b it must be the same as b star a now this star here represents can represent any of these operations so it can be addition it can be subtraction it can be multiplication it can be division so what this means is that for a property to be considered as commutative then a star b must be the same as b star a so let's take an example we know that when we add 3 to 2 that is 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3 3 plus 2 will give us 5 2 plus 3 will give us 5 so we say that addition is commutative 
It's the same for multiplication also. 4 times 5 will give us 20 and 5 times 4 will give us 20. So you can see from here that in this case, in, case, in the case of addition, A is 3 and B is 2. When you switch their positions and still keep the operation, it's the same. So we can say that commutative and multiplication of real numbers are commutative because 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3 and 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4. Let's look at, at subtraction. Now, 7 minus 8 is not the same as 8 minus 7. Now, let's look at this on the calculator. Let's take 7 minus 8. What do we get? Minus 1. Now, let's take 8 minus 7 seven and what do we get one we know that minus one is not equal to one so we can say from here that subtraction is not commutative let's look at division let's try five divided by seven five divided by seven so five divided by seven will give us 5 divided by 7 will give us 0 0.71 0 0.71425 So 0 5 divided by 7 is giving us 0 0.71425 the, the decimals will continue on, will continue on. Now let's look at another one This time let's look at 7 divided by 5 you can see clearly that 7 divided by 5 is 1.4 so the result that we got from 5 divided by 7 is different from what we got from 7 divided by 5 so we can say that 5 divided by 7 is not equal to 7 divided by 5 therefore division on real numbers is also not commutative so we can see from here that subtraction and division of real numbers are not commutative Let's look at the next property, the associative property. The associative property says that a star b, a star b star c into brackets is equal to a star b into brackets star c. Let's take an example to explain this. So let's, in this case, let's, we are repre representing the star with addition. So if you have 3 plus 12 plus 8 into brackets, so I'm bringing the pointer 3 plus 12 plus 8 into brackets is the same as 3 plus 12 into 1 bracket plus 8 now we know that 12 plus 8 will give us 20 we add 20 to 3 and we are going to get 23 3 plus 12 will give us 15 we add 15 to 8 and you are also going to get 23 so we can say that addition is associative on real numbers is associative now it's the same for multiplication too. 4 times 5 times 7 into 1 bracket is the same as 4 times 5 into 1 bracket times 7. So here what we need to do is to first compute what is in the bracket. Anytime you have something like this and there is something in the bracket, you are first going to compute what is in the bracket. So let's do that on the calculator and see. So let's first do what is in the bracket. 5 times 7. We are going to get 35 we multiply that by 4 and we will get 140 let's do for the for the right hand side for the left hand side sorry 4 times 5 we we'll go into one bracket we multiply that by 7 and we are getting 140 so you see it's equal so we can say that multiplication addition and multiplication of real numbers are also associative now let's look at subtraction we can see clearly that it is not associative because 10 minus 2 minus 10 minus 2 minus 20 into bracket is not equal to 10 minus 2 into bracket minus 20. now this is what we mean we know that we have to do what is in the bracket first so first let's do what is on the left hand side what is on the left hand side the one in the bracket is 
2 minus 20. So let's take out that 2 minus 20 will give us minus 8. Now let's do for, for the other side. So we are going to get 10 minus. We already have what is in the brackets. What is in the brackets here to be minus 8. So 10 minus another minus 8. And that will give us 18. Now let's look at the right hand side. What is in the bracket is 10 minus 2. And that will give us 8. So what is in the bracket is 8. What is outside the bracket is minus 20. So we are going to have 8 minus 20. And that will be minus 12. So we can see that the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side. It's the same for division 2. If you try this, you will see that the left hand side is also not equal to the right hand side. So we can say that subtraction and division of real numbers are not associative. Let's look at the final property. The final property says that if you have A star B delta C is the same as A star B into one bracket delta a star c into one bracket and this is called the distributive property it's called distributive property because we are distributing what is outside the bracket over what is inside the bracket so in this case we are distributing a over what is inside the bracket or we are distributing this operation over what is the operation inside the bracket so what are examples if you have four times five plus eight into brackets 5 plus 6 into bracket is the same as distributing what is outside the bracket over what is inside the bracket. So 4 times 5 into one bracket, then plus 4 times 6 into another bracket. Let's try this on the calculator and see. So we are treating what is on the left hand side first. What is in the bracket is 5 plus 6. We know that 5 plus 6 is 11. So 4 times 11 will give us 44. Now, let's look at what is on the right hand side. On the right hand side, we have 4 times 5 in one bracket. We know that 4 times 5 is 20. Then, in the other bracket, we have 4 times 6. We know that 4 times 6 will give us 24. So, if you add 20 to 24, 20 plus 24, you are going to get 44 so we can see that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so from here we can see that multiplication is distributive over addition so when you can distribute multiplication over addition in that same way you can also distribute multiplication over subtraction so this is the distributive property you can try your hands on this on the calculator and you will see that indeed what is on the left hand side is equal to what is on the right hand side thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video where we will take a question on binary operations and learn more about it we are on the topic real number system in the first video we learned what real numbers are we also saw the properties of operations on real numbers in this video we are going to look at binary operations then we will take a question on binary operations so that we can understand it very well so what are binary operations we learned in the first video that binary the basic binary operations that we know are addition subtraction multiplication and division but here we are going to learn that Computations can be done using other operators besides the four basic ones. So the four basic ones we know are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But computations or calculations can also be done besides these. There are other op operators. Sorry. Now, when that happens, the operation will be defined for you. Just like the four basic operators, these operators also combine two numbers to produce a resource. So we are going to look at, at an example. So here, a question has been given to us and an operation, which is star, has been given us. 
now in this case when this operation is given to you it will be defined for you so here star has been defined for us and the definition is that if you have a star b is the same as is equal to a plus b plus a times b so this is the definition of star for us now when you are given addition or subtraction as an operator there is no definition because it comes with its own meaning this is what i mean let's say that you are being given 4 minus 3 there is no you do you will not have to be given any definition because we know that when you have 4 minus 3 what it means is that it has been generally accepted that you have to subtract 3 out of 4 now when an, another operation is given besides the four basic operators it has to be defined for you because that operator can mean any other thing so in this case the operation star has been defined that if you have a star b it means that you, you must add the first value to the second one then add it to the product of the two values or add it to the results after you've multiplied the two values star is a binary operation because it is combining two numbers or two values to give us a resource so the operation has been defined for us a star b and it has been given us a plus b plus a b so the question is telling us to find r i a star 3 star 4 i i 2 star 5 i i i 1 star 6 i v 2 star 4 into bracket star 5 now how do we do this let's go on to find out how we are going to do this so let's take the first one 3 star 4 the operation has been defined for us as a star b is equal to a plus b plus a b so what it means is that if you have 3 star 4 a a will be equal to 3 because a is the first value then b will be equal to 4 because b is the second value so look at the definition the definition is a plus b plus a b so replace every a that you see with 3 and replace every b that you see with 4 so you are going to get a plus 4 3 plus 4 plus 3 times 4 so from here you do you solve we are going to add whenever you have this from board mass we've learned when we were considering fractions we saw that from board mass whenever you have this addition and multiplication in the same thing or in the same expression you first have to do the multiplication then you continue to the addition so you do the multiplication part 3 times 4 we are going to get 12 3 plus 4 you get 7 so we add 7 to 12 and we are getting 19 so 3 star 4 will give us 19 i i says that 2 star 5 so just as we did for i in this case the first value is no longer 3 but 2 so a will be equal to 2 then the second value which used to be 4 is now 5 so b will be equal to 5 so you substitute this into the definition wherever you see a you put 2 and wherever you see b you put 5 so you are going to get 2 plus 5 plus 2 times 5 once again you begin with the multiplication so we will do 2 times 5 which is 10 2 plus 5 which is 7 we add 7 to 10 and we are getting 17 i i says that we should do 1 star 6 so from here a will be 1 and b will be 6 so you will substitute this into the equation into the definition sorry so you replace every a with one and you replace every b with six so one plus six plus one times six we will first do the multiplication first so one times six will give us six 
then 1 plus 7, 6 will give us 7 7 plus 6 will give us 13 now we move on to IV IV says we should do 2 star 4 into bracket star 5 now you can see from here that there are 3 3 values here and we have 2 of them in, bra in the bracket whenever you are being given something like this you first have to do what is in the bracket first then you continue from there so let's take what is in the bracket first 2 star 4 so in this case A is now sorry A is now 2 and B is 4 so you substitute this into the definition you replace every A with 2 and you replace every B with 4 so when you do that you are going to get 2 plus 4 plus 2 times 4 you first do the multiplication first so 2 times 4 will give us 8 2 plus 4 will give us 6 6 plus 8 will give us 14 now you can see from here that we now have what is in the bracket what is in the bracket is now 14 so in actual sense what we are having now is 14 star 14 star 5 because what is in the bracket which is 2 star 4 is now 14 so you move on to 14 star 5 because what is in the bracket is 14 so if you have been 14 star 5 then you know that a is now 14 and b is now 5 so you replace every a with 14 and every b with 5 so 14 plus 5 plus 14 times 5 we know that 14 times 5 will give us 70 14 plus 5 will give us 19 so what is 19 plus 70 when you bring our calculator you will see that 19 plus 70 will give us 88 so 19 plus 70 is giving us 88 so whenever it's like this all you need to do is to first compute for what is in the bracket so in this case 2 star 4 we computed for 2 star 4 and we saw that it's 14 then you replace that with 14 so in this case what is in the bracket which is 2 star 4 is now 14 so you are having 14 star 5 14 star 5 then you do the computation and we are having that to be 89 so you can say that 2 star 4 into bracket star 5 is giving us 89 thank you for watching this video see you in the next video where we will take another example on binary operation hello guys my name is prince and this is my center subscribe to my youtube channel for more videos post your comments and questions on my social media handles and i'll respond to it we are on the topic real number system this is the third and final video on this topic in the previous video we learned what binary operations are we took a question on it in this video we are going to take another question on binary operation so let's look at the question the operation delta is defined by a delta b is equal to 1 over 2 into brackets a minus b form a table of the operation on the set 4 6 8 is the set closed under the operation delta i i Determine whether the operation delta is A, commutative, B, associative, I, I, I. From the table, find A, 4 delta 4, B, 4 delta 8, and C, 6 delta 8. What does this question mean? This, yes, this is what it means. There is this operation called delta. This is how, that is how we pronounce that's the name for this symbol delta and it's being defined by this 1 over 2 giving us a 1 over 2 into bracket a minus b that is if you have a delta b to find the results you have to subtract b from a then you divide the results by 2 
this is an example so delta here is an example of a binary operation because it is combining two values to give us a result we are to construct a table for the operation on this set then we are to determine whether the set is closed under the operation i will explain what a what that statement means whether the set is closed under the operation after we've drawn the table so our first task here is to draw the table for the operations on this set so what this means is that we are going to use these numbers 4 6 and 8 to draw a table using this definition for the operation now this is how the table is going to look like so we have four columns then four rows so we have you draw your table like this with the set four six eight listed here then four six eight also here so this is how we fill the table we are going to fill these empty spaces this is how it goes we are going to take four delta four then we perform that operation using the definition above the value that we get we write it here so we know that the definition is a delta b is equal to 1 over 2 into bracket 4 a minus b so the first one we are going to take is 4 delta 4 so if we have 4 delta 4 we are going to get now the definition says is 1 over 2 into bracket a so in this case since we are doing 4 delta 4 a is now 4 and b is also 4 so 4 minus 4 now we know that this is going to give us 1 over 2 into bracket 4 minus 4 is 0 so 1 over 2 times 0 is going to give us 0 so we have 4 delta 4 to be 0 we move on to the next one which will be 4 delta 6 so we are going to perform we are going to perform that operation so 4 delta 6 you you are going to use the definition to compute for it so it's going to 1 over 2 into bracket now since we have 4 delta 6 a is now 4 and b is now 6 so 4 minus 6 and we know that this is going to be equal to so we had this to be 0 so 4 minus 6 so we are going to get 1 over 2 we know that 4 minus 6 is minus 2 so 1 over 2 times minus 2 give us minus 1 so minus 1 then we move on to the next one 4 delta 8 so 4 delta 8 we took the first one 4 delta 4 4 delta 6 so we are going to go 4 delta 8 so 4 delta 8 will give us 1 over 2 into bracket 4 minus 8 because a is now 4 and b will be 8 so we are going to get this is going to give us 1 over 2 into bracket 4 minus 8 is minus 4 so 1 over 2 times minus 4 will give us minus 2 so this place will be minus 2 then you we'll come to the next one so you are going to take 6 now so 6 delta 4 so 6 delta 4 will give us 1 over 2 this time 6 is the first one so 6 is now a so you place a with 6 so 6 then minus b is now 4 so 4 you are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket 6 minus 4 is 2 so we are going to have 1 over 2 times 2 and that will give us 1 over 2 times 2 give us 1 so 6 delta 4 will give us 1 we move on to the next one which is 6 delta 6 so 6 delta 6 is going to be 1 over 2 
into brackets 6 minus 6 which will give us 1 over 2 we know that 6 minus 6 is 0 so 0 so 1 over 2 times 0 will give us 0 so this place will be 0 now we have 6 delta 8 so 6 delta 8 now 6 delta 8 will give us 1 over 2 into bracket 6 minus 8 we know that 6 minus 8 is minus 2 so we are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket minus 2 and that 1 over 2 times minus 2 will give us minus 1 so here will be minus 1 I'm going to clean here so that I can get space for the next part so I'm cleaning some parts so that I can get space for us to continue okay 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 so we can continue now I'm going to bring the pen back this time I'm changing the color so that it doesn't confuse you so we are taking for 8 we are moving on to 8 now so 8 delta 4 so 8 delta 4 will give us 1 over 2 into bracket 8 minus 4 so this is going to give us 1 over 2 to bracket 8 minus 4 we know is 4 so 1 over 2 times 4 will give us 2 so we have 8 delta 4 giving us 2 look at 8 delta 6 so 8 delta 6 we are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket 8 minus 6 and that is going to give us 1 over 2 into bracket you know that 8 minus 6 is 2 so 1 over 2 times 2 will give us 1 so here is 1 then we have 8 delta 8 you know that 8 sorry sorry I have to clean that so I'm cleaning it okay so 8 delta 8 is equal to 1 over 2 into bracket 8 minus 8 and that will give us 1 over 2 into bracket 8 minus 8 is 0 0 so 1 over 2 so if you have 1 over 2 times 0 that is going to give us zero so this place is zero so you can see from here that we have now completed the table so finally the table is going to look like this zero we have so i'm going to bring the pointer so we have four star four giving us zero four star six giving us negative one four star eight giving us negative two 6 star 4 giving us 1 6 star 6 giving us 0 6 star 8 giving us negative 1 8 star 4 giving us 2 8 star 6 giving us 1 and 8 star 8 giving us 0 now the question said that we should determine whether the operation is whether the operation is closed under the set now this is what that means we know that we were given we were given the set four six eight now for an operation to be closed under the set you will see that at the, after you finish with the table all the members or all the numbers that you used in filling the set must be all the numbers that you used in filling the table must be in the set so this is what I, what is what i mean 
these numbers here should have been four either four six or eight the members in the table must not occur none of them must occur outside the set but we can see clearly that zero is not in the set of four six and eight negative one is not in it one is not in it and two is also not in it so from there we can say that the set is not closed under the operation because negative one zero one and two are not in the set four six and eight so for the set to have been said to be closed all these must be either four six or eight but since negative one zero one and two that are in the table are outside the set or are not in the set we said we say that the set is not closed under the operation delta now let's move on to the next part we have to determine whether delta is commutative in the first video we said that for commutativity a operation b should be the same as b operation a so in this case the operation is delta so a delta b should be the same as b delta a so if delta is commutative then we we can take any example from the set that we have if delta is commutative then from the table 4 star 4 delta 8 should be equal to 8 delta 4 now if this is satisfied then we can say that delta is commutative once again you can pick any example you can pick any example from the table you can pick 4 delta 6 4 delta 8 you can pick any example but do not pick 4 delta 4 6 delta 6 or 8 delta 8 because we can see clearly from here that a and b must be different so you can pick any two different numbers so here i decided to pick 4 and 8 so for this to be commutative then we, we say that 4 delta 8 should be equal to 8 delta 4 so after we've done the calculations and 4 delta 8 is equal to 8 delta 4 then we can say that delta is commutative so let's look at this 4 delta 8 is given as negative 2 when we do the computation because we know that the the operation is given as 1 over 2 into bracket a minus b so 4 delta 8 to give us 1 over 2 into bracket 4 minus 8 and after this we see that we are getting negative 2 now let's look at 8 delta 4 8 delta 4 is given as 2 so while 4 delta 8 is given as negative 2 8 delta 4 4 is given as 2 and we know that negative 2 is not equal to 2 so since 4 delta 8 is not equal to 8 delta 4 we say that delta is not commutative you, once again you can pick any example you can pick 6 delta 8 you can pick 8 delta 4 you can pick 4 delta 6 you can use any of them to try now remember that if you are picking 4 delta 6 then you should know that 4 delta 6 should be equal to 8 6 delta 4 then you try it when if one of them is not commutative it means that the rest are also like that so since 4 delta 8 is not equal to 8 delta 4 we see that delta is not commutative let's look at for associativity we learned in the first video that for associativity a operation b into bracket operation c must be equal to a operation b operation c into bracket now since the operation here is delta what it means is that a delta b into bracket delta c should be equal to a delta b delta c into bracket so once again we pick any example remember any example so i decided to pick 4 delta 6 into bracket delta 8 if delta is associative then 4 delta 6 delta 8 should be equal to 4 delta into bracket 6 delta 8 now you can see from here that we just change the position of the bracket so in the first or in the left hand side the brackets are with the first two then on the right hand side the brackets are with the last two so we pick the first one we are going to solve for the first one if we are able to get this as equal to the second one then we say that delta is associated so we are going to take the left hand side 
when we take the left hand side we have 4 delta 6 delta 8 remember that i said when you, whenever you have this you first have to compute for what is in the bracket so we are going to compute for 4 delta 6 now when you, if you are computing for 4 delta 6 remember the definition is 1 over 2 into bracket a minus b so in this case 4 becomes a and 6 becomes b so you are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket 4 minus 6 and that is going to give us negative 1 now since we have what is in the bracket to be negative 1 you are going to replace 4 delta 6 with negative 1 so we are going to get negative 1 delta 8 then we do the computation again so negative 1 delta 8 is going to give us so in this case negative 1 is going to be a and 8 is going to be b so after we've done the computation you are going to get negative 4.5 negative 4.5 so we can see from here that 4 delta 6 into bracket delta 8 is giving us negative 4.5 remember you first compute for what is in the bracket after we, we did that we got negative one then you place what is in the bracket with the answer that you have then you do the final computation that final answer will be the answer for this so 4 delta 6 into bracket delta 8 is giving us negative 4.5 so this is the left hand side on the left hand side you got negative 4.5 let's look at what we are going to get for the right hand side the right hand side is 4 delta 6 delta 8 into bracket so once again you do what is in the bracket first so you are going to do 6 delta 8 if you are doing 6 delta 8 6 is now a and 8 is now b so you are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket 6 minus 8 and that is going to give us negative 1 because 6 minus 8 will give you negative 2. 1 over 2 times negative 2 give us negative 1. Now, we replace what we have in the bracket, which is negative. We replace it with negative 1. So, we are going to get 4 delta negative 1 because 6 over 8 is now negative 1. Then, you do the computation with this. So, 4 delta negative 1 will give us 1 over 2 into bracket. 4 minus minus 1 so because we are having minus in the bracket that's why i brought the first one as square brackets then the normal bracket will be inside the first the square bracket so in this case don't forget that the definition of the operation is 1 over 2 into bracket a minus b so this time 4 is going to be a so a will be equal to 4 and b will be equal to minus 1 but remember that there is already a negative sign here so a this time a you place a with 4 so you have 4 here then the negative sign will come but the b is also coming with another negative sign so it's going to be 4 minus minus 1 and that's going to give us 4 plus 5 so we are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket 4 plus 5, 4 plus 1 sorry that's going to give us 4 plus 1 so we are going to get 1 over 2 into bracket 4 plus 1 which is 5 so we are going to get 1 over 2 times 5 and that is going to give us 2.5 as shown here so we can now say that 4 star 6 star 8 into bracket is 2.5 Remember that when we did for the left hand side, we got negative 4.5. The right hand side is giving us 2.5. So we can say that the left hand side, which is 4 star 6 into bracket star 8, is not equal to the right hand side, which is 4 star 6 star 8 into bracket. So delta is not associative. III says that from the table, we should find 4 delta 4 so we have our table here so if you are supposed to find 4 delta 4 all we need to do is to read 4 delta 4 from the table so 4 delta 4 will give us 0 so we pick that we are supposed to find 4 delta 8 so you read 4 
sorry sorry I have to clean here so from here here's what you're going to do you read for delta 8 so for delta 8 will give us negative 2 so you pick negative 2 then the next is 4 delta 6 uh, sorry 6 delta 8 so you read 6 delta 8 so 6 delta 8 is going to give us negative 1 so that is also going to give us negative 1 thank you so much for watching this video and all the videos on real number system this is the end of the topic